Hey there, this is Ocean K with a sneak peek and a beta call for a new rack extension that I call Repeat. Now it's a real-time looper. Now if you know about loopers, this is a real-time four-channel, infinite bounce, infinite merge, first loop capable phrase looper. Now if you don't know anything about loopers, a looper is essentially a, a, a program where you can record some audio and it automatically and immediately loops that audio. And so then you can add more audio on top of it. There are four channels so you can create four different tracks of audio and mix them all in real time. Now if you've ever heard like a beatboxer that maybe records like two bars and then overdubs more stuff on that and builds on top of that and makes his whole arrangements all in real time, well, that beatboxer is using a looper. And repeat now puts a real time looper in the reason rack. So let's take a quick look at repeat. Now the first thing that you generally have to do with loopers is you have to set the loop length. And there are three different ways of doing that in, in repeat. The first one is when you automatically load uh, repeat into the rack, the tempo is, sent to the, is set to the same tempo as the reason sequencer tempo. So in this case, its default is 120, so the tempo is 120. So right when you throw it in uh, the, the rack, repeat has, a I think, a two-bar loop at 120. So uh, if your sequencer is set up how you want it, then you can just go ahead and record right away. The second way that you can do this is independent of the sequencer, you can set your own tempo in repeat. So you just tap the tempo that you want, and once you've tapped uh, four beats or more, then it just starts to do the average of that. So in this case, I tapped out about 92 BPM. And so once you tap your tempo, it then sets uh, the phrase to be a two-bar loop at that tempo. Well, the third way to set a, a loop length, and the way that I do most of the time, and I think most people do, is they do what's called a first loop length. So instead of setting the length of your loop before you start making a loop, the first loop allows you to start recording, and when you get to the end of where you want the loop to be, you just say, okay, here's my endpoint, and then that's going to be your loop length. In this case, when you set that here, you clear the loop length, whether it's been set by tempo or the reason sequence or any other way, and then when you press record and play and you start recording your loop, whenever you want that end of the loop to play, you just hit end, and that sets the length of your loop. Okay. Now to move between those three, if you've set your loop this way and you want to move to tempo, you just start temp uh, tapping out your tempo and it automatically moves to that. If you're in loop length or uh, tempo and you want the reason sequencer to take over, you just change the, uh, the reason sequencer tempo and everything locks back up. Uh, if you're in tempo or the reason sync, then you just uh, you know press end or clear uh, with your loop length, and it jumps back to that. So it's really easy to jump between the three. Although I think it's pretty rare to want to jump between the three in a song, but you know who knows? Have fun with it. So that's how you set your loop length. The next part of repeat we can look at is the four channels. Now uh, each channel is its own loop. Uh, they're all synced, so you can play them all together, but they're like four independent audio channels. You can do uh, independent audio with each one. Each channel has an enable button, and so this enable does two things. Number one, it arms the track when you're recording, and so when you record, it'll record to track uh, one. You can also record to multiple tracks at the same time. The enable button also sets the bounce uh, source. We'll talk about bounce in a second, but if you see, you click two here and two lights up there and three and three light up, lights up there. So we'll talk about bounce in just a second. But these are your enable buttons to enable recording and to enable bouncing. The next part is a fader. Each channel has its own fader. Now the zero line is actually at full volume. So there's a little bit of amplification here if you go above the zero line. This button is the clear audio, so if you have audio on this channel and you clear it, it's going to erase the audio from that channel. So use that button uh, only when you're sure you want to do that. Each channel has its own mute 
button. And then each channel has its uh, has two aux sends. These are just like in a mixer. So you could have maybe a reverb and a distortion uh, on reverb on aux 1 and distortion on aux 2. And so you can have reverb on 1 and 2 and distortion on 2 and 3 and so on. So these are just like mixed channel aux. Okay, so those are the four channels. That's basically all there is to that. Now this is the bounce section. Let's say that you have audio on channel one and audio on channel two, and you want to bounce both of those to channel four. So the audio on one and the audio on two is merged, it's put on channel four, and then uh, channel one and channel two are cleared out. Okay, the way you do that is you set your source the channel is here, so you want to bounce from 1 and 2, and then you set your destination here. You want to, your destination is 4. So when you press bounce, all of the audio that was on channel 1 and on the, all the audio, audio that was on channel 2 is now combined and put onto channel 4, and now channels 1 and 2 are clear. Okay? So that's how you bounce to empty channels. You can also merge. So let's say you want all the audio that's on channel 1 and channel 2. You want it to be combined and then put on channel 1. That's fine. You just set your destination to 1. So in this case, your source is 1 and 2, and your destination is 1. You can also have multiple destinations. So if your destination was 1 and 2, and your source is 1 and 2, what happens is the independent audio on channel 1 and the independent audio on channel 2 will be merged, and the merged audio will be put on channel 1 and on channel 2. Okay? So the merging and the bouncing, it's, it's really quite flexible. You can pretty much do whatever you want with that. And then this last section here, there's just a master uh, volume audio. Uh, we've got our out meter here and our in meter here. So that's basically what repeat is. Why don't we uh, hear it in action? Now I'll warn you, I am not a beatboxer, so uh, this may sound really bad, but uh, it's just easier maybe to explain what I'm doing while I'm doing it if I'm doing just sounds with my mouth. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Let's turn this on. So now I have my audio going in to repeat, and you can also see it's coming out. I'm going to use first loop, so I'm going to clear out my loop length. I'm going to set channel 1 as my destination. And I don't know what the length of this loop is going to be. Maybe it's going to be 1 bar or 2 bars or 4 bars. I don't know. And I don't know the tempo that I'm going to use. But that's why first loop is such a powerful option. So I've armed channel 1, and I've, I'm uh, setting it to record. Now when I press play, it's going to start playing the loop and recording on channel 1. Okay, so let's see how this goes. Okay, so let's see how good I look. Okay, so that's right. So what I did was I uh, uh, did the track with my uh, with my voice, and when I was at the end of the loop, I just hit end, and then I turned record off so I could talk over it. I could go ahead and automatically start overdubbing on channel one, but I turned record off because I wanted to talk. So now I've done this. Why don't I create a second channel, and uh, maybe I'll make a little hi hat. Okay. So now I've turned record off, so now I'm talking again. So I've got that little hi-hat on channel 2. And I've got just the bass and snare on channel 1. Okay, so now let's say I wanted to combine. I always want the hi-hat to be with that uh, bass and drum. So why don't I... Uh, enable 1 and 2 as my bounce source, and why don't I put everything on channel 4, so once I hit bounce, 
It doesn't sound like anything has changed, except now that audio is combined on channel 4, and there's nothing on channel 1 and channel 2. Okay? So I've bounced that the kick and snare and the hi-hats that was on 1 and 2, it's now on channel 4. So now why don't I record something else on channel 2? How about a little bass? Okay. So I've got bass, channel two, and my drums on channel four. And you can see how you can build up, you know, big songs um, just by bouncing and layering. And, and uh, yeah. Whenever you hit play, uh, it starts right at the beginning of the loop. So if you wanted to do like a breakdown. Right. Um, you know, one thing we haven't done is the aux, so why don't we just bring that in? How about we bring a little distortion here, turn this around, aux 1 will send to... So those just work as standard Okay, so that is uh, that is how repeat works. Um, it's uh, as you can tell, just a, a nice little looper. By the way, the reason sequencer was off the whole time. Repeats uh, repeat sequencer is completely independent of the reason sequencer, so reason doesn't have to be running. Um, or the sequencer doesn't have to be running to get repeat to run. They're completely independent. Uh, so that is a sneak peek of uh, my latest rack extension repeat, a uh, four-channel um, infinite bounce, infinite merge, first loop capable phrase looper. Uh, as you can see, the, all the functionality is done, ready for beta testing. Uh, instructions for joining the beta test are below. Um, otherwise, if you have any feedback or questions at all, feel free to post them uh, here in the forum or uh, just send me an email. I'd love to, uh, to hear what you think about this. Thanks so much for watching.